Well, it's interesting to me because the, the, the commentary and the way that he was talking yesterday seemed a lot like, and, and even you say that he hears the last thing and he spews that out. It was, it's very similar to what I feel like, and a lot of people feel like, what Trump does. And I wonder for you, do you have, do you see the kind of correlations or the parallels between the way that Kanye is acting in this kind of manic state and the same way that, that Trump tweets? A hundred percent. And it's so interesting because after I did the interview with him in April, when I started seeing him, you know, with all the Trump rhetoric, mm -hmm. I wasn't really phased by it. When I saw him throw the hat on, I was, I, was a, I was concerned a little bit. But then I said, once everybody really hears Kanye talk and realize he don't know anything about Trump's policies, right. he don't know nothing about Trump's ideologies, all he likes about Donald Trump is strictly his braggadocious personality, mm -hmm. the, the, the loud guy who says what he wants to say, when he wants to say it, about who he wants to say it to. Who do you think that reminds Kanye of? Right. Himself. Right. You know what I'm saying? The same, same narcissistic individuals who are, who are about themselves, know how to sell themselves. They're their own biggest brands. Trump is on every hotel. Yeezy's on every sneaker. That's what he sees. That's it. He's looking at it from a brand perspective, nothing else. So even when he said in the interview, I would have ran a Donald Trump campaign with Bernie Sanders' principles, when he talks about campaign, he wasn't talking about running a campaign of hate. He was just talking right. about going out there and saying what he wants to say when he wants to say it. Like, he look, we forget that he went on that stage at the VMAs and said he wanted to run for president in 2020. I think he I don't think anyone like forgot. I don't thunder. think anybody forgot that show. Oh. <laughs> I think he looks at Trump and says, that could have been me. I should have did it. Why did I listen to everybody telling me I, I shouldn't have done it? I should have did it. Mm -hmm. Well, I, and I remember in the interview he said while he was in recovery, he thought of you and he wanted to give you the first interview. So tell me, how did this actually all come about? I mean, uh, Kanye, Kanye always, you know, reaches out to me from time to time. Like, this is the first time that I can ever remember him having a phone. Like, he's never had a, a phone. Like, he's what? always he's never had a phone? via... Yeah, he's, yeah, that's, like, people, people in the music industry will tell you that. Like, Kanye, he, he historically never had a phone, so he would always correspond through email. And, like, he would just hit me up every now and then and, you know, you know reach out and ask me certain things. Like, he'd call me every now and then, and he just, you know, reached out back in, like, February and he was like, "Yo, I want to sit down and I want to have a conversation." You know, I haven't I haven't spoken in a while. And the thing is, everybody keeps saying he's doing this to sell music. I don't necessarily think he's doing this to sell music. I think that he's finally just back in a space where he wants to talk. And I think that's that's what it was. Now, do we all wish he would disconnect and go go back in hiding? Yes, we do. You know, and you know what's so crazy? Before this happened, maybe like early February, mm -hmm. I said to myself, man, I miss Kanye West's energy. You spent 12 hours with Kanye during this interview. Uh, what is going on here? What was your feeling from him with this day that you spent? Um, well, you know, I actually did that interview on April 18th, so it was kind of before we saw him in the Make America Great Again had uh, yeah, yeah. him really professing his love for Trump, you know, so, I, so the conversations we was having about Donald Trump was based off some rhetoric that he was spewing at the end of 2016 when he was on stage saying he would have voted for Trump. Um, but I, I actually left the interview with a, with, a, with a sense of understanding of who Kanye West is. I, I was concerned about his mental health, and I mean, that's something that he's dealing with, but I didn't, but I didn't. I didn't see a crazy person. I didn't right. see an insane person at all. You know, I just felt like that, that old Kanye we love is still there. And I, I loved his messages about economic empowerment. I loved the fact that he got 300 acres of land he wanted to build a community on. I loved the fact that he was discussing mental health so openly because that's something that's always been taboo in our, in, our, in our community, man. So I actually left with a good feeling. And I couldn't wait for everybody else to see that interview and get the good feeling too. Yeah, yeah. But Kanye well, went and ruined it. <laughs> With another interview. TMZ. Yeah. Well, I mean, you, you, yeah. Talk, you talk about mental health and you, one of the things that comes to mind for me in the conversation, you talked about therapy and you ask him point out, point blank, was he in therapy? And he said no, that the world was kind of his therapy. Did that, did that response kind of surprise you at all? Um, it did surprise me, but I mean, that's the type of stuff I used to say before I actually started going to therapy. You know, I go to therapy uh, once a week, you know, and before I started going to therapy, when I, I would say things like that, oh, the world is my therapy, or you know what, why pay somebody when I can just talk to myself? Yeah. You know, I'm that, I was, I was, I'm that type of person. I, you'll see me mumbling to myself. I am literally talking to myself, but it's nothing like sitting down talking to a therapist, man, and you know, I, I, I've been encouraging him 
to actually go sit down and, and talk to a therapist. Like, 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 why not? It can't, it can't hurt anything. Like, we don't focus enough on mental health in our communities. Like, you see all of these go green places and everybody's juicing and everybody's got a new diet plan and workout plan. But what are we doing to this mentally to work yeah. this out? Well, you, you talk yeah. about the, the Gemini effect. Uh, tell me what it was like to see him the, during April and that, what, what it was like to see him during that April interview. Because it seems like a totally different person now that we're seeing in this TMZ interview. And, and since then, what has been your experience of him? Um, every time I talk to Kanye, I get the calm Gemini side. Uh, he's very observant. He's a listener. But I think that, you know, he's very uh, impulsive. You know what I'm saying? So if you're talking to him and he likes what he hears, he'll shoot it out to the world. And I don't think that's the way things work. I think sometimes you got to take things in. You got to let it digest. You process it, and then you have an understanding of it. When you have an understanding of it, then you can properly speak on it. That's how you avoid, you know, getting on TV and saying stupid things like slavery was a choice. Like, well, yo, and for a guy that's in the fat, oh, go ahead. No, no, you go ahead, go ahead. No, I was going to say for a guy that's in the fashion world, like, you know, you, I, I was at his, his factory, and I'm watching them actually make clothes. And, I mean, if you've ever seen somebody, you know, cutting up fabric, you know, they measure perfectly because they want to measure twice so they can cut once because mm -hmm. they don't want to waste fabric. Right. So that's what I feel like we should do with our thoughts. Measure twice so you can cut once. The same way you wouldn't waste fabric, don't waste your thoughts.